What's up guys, it's me Dovnatic and welcome to my very first game of the PPL. I am so scared, but I am so excited and oh and shit, shit's about to kick off. Me versus Ellie in the first game, Tottenham Hotspur versus Teddington Teddy Ursus. I'm expecting Ellie probably won't meet our game time as agreed because <laughs> she's probably hungover. I mean I don't know but she's with Richie right now and hey if she doesn't turn up it's my win. So, um, yeah. Um, the team analysis. I'll, I just did this, and it was 45 minutes, and I thought, you guys will just want to see the battle. Um, so I'll give you a much, much, much briefer um, guide to my team and what I think Ellie will be bringing. So we'll go with what Ellie is bringing, or I think Ellie is going to bring first. I could be completely wrong, but I hope I'm right, because that means my team is set up correctly. I am expecting her. Out of her, these are her 11 Pokemon, by the way. Heatran, Mega Venusaur, Milotic, Dublade, fucking core and a half, that is. Um, Darmanitan, Togekiss, Frostlass, Heracross, Gramble, Zebstriker, Wartortle. Out of them, I am expecting Ellie to bring Mega Venusaur, M um, Dublade, Darmanitan, Togekiss, Frostlass, Heracross. I am expecting Mega Venusaur because it's just an absolute nightmare to deal with. Not for me, though. Um, Dooblade is actually scarier for me. That thing is scary. Once that thing's gone, I'm pretty happy. Dunmanitan, obviously a powerhouse, but I have fast Pokemon that can kill it. Um, Togekiss is going to be annoying too, but I can also kill that thing. Frostlass, um, I'm expecting her to bring this because I have Salamence on my team. Um, and it gets Ice Shard, and its physical attack is the same as its special, but I should probably use it as a suicide lead. Which I'd find quite weird, because I do have a defogger, um, so does she. And I'm expecting, I'm not expecting her to bring Wartortle, just to rapid spin. Um, I mean, she's got quite a few Pokemon weak to rocks, but that's in, that's enough. Um, and Heracross, I'm expecting her to bring that, because all my, combined, my core, defensive core, is weak to fighting and bug. So, I'm expecting her to bring that, but, as long as it's not gut, if it's not guts, that's fine. If it's guts, then it's a bit scary. So that's, they're the Pokemon I think she's going to bring. So that has influenced my decision on what Pokemon I'm bringing to um, the battle. So, the first, what I'm going to do is, um, you guys can read, I'm pretty confident of that. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'll have the EVs and IVs and stuff below. The Pokemon that have got weird sets, I'll explain why, but I won't go over what the numbers are and stuff, because you can read them for yourself. So if you're tabbing right now, come back and watch you. Sneaky little bastards, you. The, the battle will start soon, don't worry. So, first up, we have Spoonmon, the Alakazam. Standard, really, um, set. Apart from I have Shadow Ball, no, sorry, not Shadow Ball. Substitute to try and dodge Thunder Waves, which could be coming from Togekiss. She could bring in Togekiss um, to try and Thunder Wave me if I have this thing in. I really, really want to trace. I have a Serene Grace from... Um, Togekiss or Sheer Force from Darmanitan. I don't think I'll get to do the Darmanitan because I'm expecting that Darman to be, Darmanitan to be scarfed. So it won't give me a safe chance to get the Sheer Force, which is a shame. Um, but if I could get Serene Grace, that'd be lovely. That'll give every move I have like a 20% chance to lower the special defense of the opponent, which is nice. Especially considering I am running Psychic over Psy Shock. Now that is kind of like a, I mean, I think she'll expect me to bring Psy Shock. I'm bringing Psychic. I'm bringing raw power right now. It's 10 base power more. So what, with Stab, that's 15 base power? I don't know. But then obviously Psyshot gets it. So it's not too much difference. Um, but yeah, I'm bringing Psychic, not Psyshock. Just in case she wants to bring in a physical wall, you know. Um, so that's, that's Spoonmon. That's Alakazam. It's there. It's not there for any Pokemon in particular. It's just there to, you know, punch absolute holes in her team. Because once her scarf is gone, um, she is at mercy of Alakazam. She she can't... Nothing appreciates it. Nothing. I mean, what? Venusaur can... I'll oh, two-shot Venusaur, but I don't know if it can oko me with anything. Um, especially if it's bulky. Ah, oh, man. This thing, this thing just... Oh, I could. It's so good. I could either use it early game, put dents in the team... Or, or I could use it late game, late game sweep, and once the fast Pokemon are gone, 
which is probably what I'm thinking will happen. I might just have to call upon it when I have to call upon it. Second Pokemon is Salamence. This Salamence, I feel, is going to be the MVP along with one other Pokemon in my team in particular. They're all going to be MVPs if we win. If they're not, well, then they've got some thinking to do. But I've gone for a EV-wise, it's just like a offensive Salamence. Attacks and like otherwise, it, the, the role it's going to play is kind of bulky, but I need offense because obviously Ellie's team is is quite bulky itself. So I've got Intimidate over Moxie because Intimidate will help greatly stop Dumanitan and Heracross if she brings them, and even Dewblade, which I'm also thinking will uh, stop. Obviously, the three minus one on attack. She hasn't got a Defiant user, I believe, but if she did, it, it obviously isn't a scary one because I can't think. Although no, Gramble is that that's rattled, not Defiant. Um, she's not going to bring Gramble, though. I'm pretty confident of that. I mean, the only dragon I have is Salamence. So, that, that Gramble could be gone relatively easily. Um, so I've got, I've got Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Aerial Ace, Flamethrower. Flamethrower is specifically for Dewblade. Aerial Ace is specifically for Venusaur. Otherwise, Earthquake and Dragon Claw... Oh, Earthquake is specifically there for Heatran. Because if I didn't have Earthquake, I'd be walled by Heatran. If I didn't have Aerial Ace, I would be walled by Venusaur. And if I didn't have Flamethrower, I wouldn't be walled, but Earthquake only does like 33% to Dewblade without defensive investment, just with an Violite on there, so... Flamethrower does um, 55 to 62 or something, so it's a guaranteed two-hit KO. So if I could get, you know, Stealth Rocks up and maybe a crit could take it down, but obviously I could also get the burn. That would be nice. Um, the defense, the EVs, the only weird thing of this is, because it's mixed, obviously there's four in Special Attack, that allows me to two-hit KO Dewblade. Um, I've taken four out of speed because uh, Ellie's fastest Pokemon that I think uh, really matters. Obviously, Frostlass is naturally faster than base 100. It's 110 or 105, one of the two. Um, so it would outspeed me naturally anyway. So I've gone, basically, I'm a max speed base 99 Pokemon now. Um, but that's still going to outspeed Dumanitan and Heracross if they're not scarfed. So that's why I've taken some out of speed and put one on HP so I don't. So I can live four turns of Stealth Rocks, basically, if I don't get attacked. Um, so that's that set. It's got leftovers, by the way. Obviously, Alakazam had the Alakazite. Then we have Emperor the Empoleon with knockoff. Obviously, it's knockoff items. Uh, Elia has only got one of I like user. Oh, no, two, sorry. Obviously, one being Dewblade. If I can knock off Dewblade, it won't do much. But obviously, um, it will just get ruined. I mean, Scald might even be able to take it out the next turn. But, you know, she has to... I don't know if Sacred Sword will one-shot. Sacred, Shor Sacred Sword and Shadow Sneak might kill me, combined. So, I have to watch out for that. But I think I d it's really scary. I don't know whether Knockoff would be better, guaranteeing to get rid of that Violite, or um, Scalding to try and get the burn. I think the Knockoff probably would, because Salamence can deal with that thing. Uh, plus one Shadow Sneak, I highly doubt will kill me. Um, yeah, I can't remember if I said the moves or not, but I have Scald, Defog, and Stealth Rocks as my other moves. Scald's obviously there because it's Stab and can get the Burn. Defog to get rid of the Hazards, which this Frostlass could potentially bring, plus also Stealth Rocks. What is she going to bring Stealth Rocks on, actually? What have I said? Mega Venusaur, Dewblade, Dimanitan, Togekiss, Frostlass, Heracross. She might not bring Stealth Rocks. The only Stealth Rocker I can see on the team is Heatran. And if she wants to bring Heatran, that's not scary at all. Not at all. I think she's going to leave it. I don't think she's going to have Stealth Rocks. She might not even... If she doesn't bring Stealth Rocks, Salamence is going to run Riot. All I'm going to say. And then Crest won't get affected either. Um, Alakazam won't on the first turn. The rule in the PPL is that you have to Mega first turn unless you're switching out immediately like a double switch you have to make a first turn otherwise you're basically having the normal Pokemon so if someone bought a normal Alakazam that would be a bit unfair on them um, anyway a bit sidetracked there um, it's the especially defensive variant of Empoleon pretty standard set really um, he's just there to do what Empoleon does best he's there to he takes a lot of moves really nice the fairies will be nice to deal with fires neutral grass neutral but I mean, I took two funders from a Galvantula with this thing, so it, it can take moves, which is nice. On to the fourth Pokemon. This is who I also believe is going to be my other MVP and a, a huge, huge potential uh, to win the game for me. 
is Subcarmine Raikou. Now, I've made it shiny to try and bluff Ellie into thinking I have the Aura Sphere. If I can bluff the choice item early on, it might, might force her into a false sense of safety. If I can play it correctly and get out of the Pokemon I pre expected, Togekiss or Venusaur in safely, I can set up a sub. Then she is royally screwed. I'm expecting Venusaur will probably be like Sleep Powder, Leech Seed. Oh, that's a point. Sleep Powder, Venusaur. I couldn't think of that. Well, um, I'm thinking that it, it could be good. It, it could be good. I mean, I have got sub on two Pokemon to avoid sleep if it's in on these two Pokemon, of course. Um, but that's another thing. I didn't even think of sleep. Now I'm worrying. I've got an hour to go, though. I've got an hour to go. Um, this thing's got Thunderbolt, Extra Sensory, Substitute, Carmine, Thunderbolt. Ellie does not have a ground type. That is a huge flaw with her team. Ground type is such a good defensive type. But, no. She has a Milotic and a Togekiss. A defensive core in itself. And she doesn't have a ground type to cover its common weakness. Or a, she has a lightning rod user in Zeb Striker. But honestly, Zeb Striker can't do anything to me. Even at plus one, I don't think it could probably break a sub. Um, and you know, I could just set up calm minds on it. But that's what it is. The EVs I'll quickly explain because they are a bit different. I'm base 115. Basically, I have base, I have 179 speed. Um, because the outspeeds max speed Frostlass by one. So I've taken some out of speed and put the rest in HP because, you know, a bit slightly bulkier substitutes could be the difference, you know. Um, and hopefully they are. I've gone all out special attack after plus one car minor, but 250 special attack. Um, and this thing could potentially sweep her team purely because she doesn't got ground type. She hasn't got anything that resists it either, I don't think. Let me have a quick look. She's got nothing that resists it apart from Venusaur, who I have extra sensory for. Extra sensory can also flinch. So, um... I'm really, really pinning a lot of hope on this Raikou, but I had to be prepared to not use it as well. Um, fifth Pokemon, <laughs> Cresselia. Ellie, I'm pretty sure she's bluffing. She's been saying that she is 100% sure I am not bringing Cresselia. And if that means she doesn't bring um, Heracross because of this, I will be over the moon. It will make my life so much easier. And that means Choice Scarf Damanitan is not scary to deal with for me. I might, well, I might have to let something die, actually. So that is a problem. But... Choice Scarf Damantan is nowhere near as powerful as Choice Band or Life Orb. And so, you know, Crest can just deal with it. Um, because I'm running Thunder Wave, which could just completely cripple a Choice Scarf, which is nice. Um, but obviously if she has Togekiss with Heal Bell, feel free to do that, Ellie. But um, you might just die to Raikou. Um, I have Psychic as my offensive move because I don't want to be Taunt Bait because Frostlass can get it. But Psychic, you know, hits most things apart from Dewblade. This thing is a sitting, literally a sitting duck. Like, apart from it's a levitating duck. But for Dewblade to come in and hurt me. So, it's a free sword dance for Dewblade. So basically, um, Salamence is my switch in to Dewblade. I'm hoping. If she doesn't have Sacred Sword, Empoleon is going to be pretty good. Because Iron Head, Shadow Claw will do a lot actually, but I am faster. Shadow Sneak, I could get the Knock Off and Burn Off on that thing. So if she doesn't bring Sacred Sword, I'm fine. But I'm thinking she will. Because um, she might think I'm bringing Umbreon for some reason. That's why there is a huge fighting weakness. Uh, or not, there's not a huge fighting weakness. But combined with Bug, my whole core, my whole core is weak to it. Um... I am max defense, as you can see. Moonlight is my third choice, because, you know, if I can get a Thunder Wave off on that Dumantan, I can stall it out with Flare Blitzes, that's fine. And then I have Luna Dance, which I was thinking about Psycho Shift in case I get toxic or burnt, but she's got Heat Tram, which can avoid the fire, and free Pokemon immune to poison, so... That 
kind of deterred me from using it. So I have Luna Dance. If I am going to get toxic or, you know, I'm low health, going to die on the turn, I'm thinking, right, let's just Luna Dance and let's heal something up to maximum. And then I can start all over again with something else. And as long as it's not dead. Um, so that's that's Cresselia. And then finally, oh man, this is so much quicker than last time. Uh, we have Terrakion, who is slightly modified because... This is my Choice Scarf Mon. All I'm worried about outspeeding is Darmanitan, max speed. Max speed, Darmanitan with Choice Scarf, or without the Choice Scarf, is 161. So I've made myself 162 speed, um, and I've bunged the rest in uh, HP for a bit of bulk on this thing, because um, I feel it might need it. Along with 11 and 112 defenses, it's got some decent natural bulk. Um, I have Close Combat, Stone Edge, Earthquake, Aerial Ace. All my Earthquake will have leftovers, by the way, apart from Alakazam, who is the Alakazite, and this is the Chase Scarf. Everything is leftovers. Um, this this thing is going to kind of be a revenge killer. This, I don't really know what role it's going to play. But it's, I have to bring it, because it's Terrakion. Terrakion... Can can do things to everything on his team. Uh, sorry, his team, Eddie's team. I'm yawning because it's nine o'clock and I battle. Oh my god, battles in one hour. Um, yeah, it can just it can just do things. So I've got I've just put as much HP as I can, and so it's an odd number. Um, attack is at full, but I am jolly nature. Defense, 111. I got base 90 defenses. That's pretty good. 12 and special defense, 158 speed. Um, justified as well. I. I'm thinking, you know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't got a knockoff user. I think that might be why I thought I wanted to bring this. Not, I'm just not sure why I'd want um to do a not uh, knock off my choice scarf though. But you know, I can play around dark moves. What has she got that could have a dark move? Nothing. Literally nothing. Unless like. I don't know. No, there aren't any dark moves, but still, Defiant is nice. Uh, no, Justified, sorry, not Defiant. If it was Defiant, that'd be so much better. Um, I just had to be careful around Milo Tick if she brings it. I just realised with Salamence, because obviously competitive, but, you know, Raikou can take that thing on. Um, and that's the team. That's a short introduction to the team. Hopefully you like the GFX. I can't remember if I said already, but it was made by Lace and MC. Fellow competitor in the PPL. Go check him out, guys, because... He's practicing his GFX, so if you guys have any projects, he might be willing to take them on for you. Um, hopefully you guys understood this brief... I say brief, it's 20 minutes. The, the previous one was 45, so obviously that's better. Um, stick around for the battle, guys. It's going to be good, I hope, because I haven't actually had it yet. That's why I'm doing the team now and why I'm talking about what my expected team for Ellie is. Um, so I'll see you for the battle. Right, here we go, guys. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. It is... The game versus Ellie, and oh, this game—it's been. Oh, we were we were talking shit to each other so much, um, but it all came down to what really matters, and that was a Pokemon battle. So I lead off with Raikou, she leads off with Heracross, and I'm thinking instantly, right? This is Scarf Heracross. This is not the start I wanted. I switch out because obviously I want to keep Raikou. I was talking about how Raikou was important to me, so I go straight into Salamence, expecting him not to go for the Stone Edge, maybe the Earthquake, maybe the Megahorn. Just, you know, a nice powerful stab move to start off there, but you know, after Intimidate and that resistance, it does nothing. Although it still does a respectable amount considering I am resisting it. And, well, it is a goddamn Heracross. Look at that horn, it's so good. Right, anyway, Salamence eats that up, and I'm, uh, I'm lefties, so... I can't bluff the choice or anything anymore. In comes Tokyo, so I go for the Earthquake, expecting the Heatran, um, in case I was running an Aerial Ace, which I am. But she goes straight out into this thing, and, oh man, if she'd gone into Heatran at this point, it would have been a completely different game. Um, I have to switch out here, because obviously it's a it's a goddamn fairy, and I can't do anything other than Aerial Ace it, or Flamethrower, and Flamethrower ain't going to be doing much. So, um, I bring in Raikou, figured, right, here's a chance that I could put some early pressure on, try and get behind a sub, but she goes straight for a Baton Pass, which is a free switch, and I'm like, well... Shit, this is not good. So she told me she was prepared, so she brings in Heatran. At this stage, I'm thinking, right, this is definitely specially defensive Heatran. Is she going to have the raw? I was thinking as soon as I hit sub, I was like, right, let's calm mine, see if the raw is a thing. She goes for the Stealth Rocks, I'm like, cool, she went for Stealth Rocks. Um, hopefully she's starting to panic a bit. Um, and unfortunately for me, she does have the raw. Um, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I go for the Calm Mind here just to see. I could have gone, if I had gone for a Thunderbolt here, um, this could have come out a bit differently as well. I hadn't actually noticed this until just now. 
So if I get slightly saltier as the narration goes on, you'll see why. The roar is there. I yeah, I was half expecting it when she said she was prepared. Um, because out of Terrakion Salamence, Mega Alakazam, and um, what's it called? Something else. I can't think now. I can't. I can't remember which one I haven't said. Could all all easily set up. In comes the Venusaur. I go for the Earthquake because um, it hits uh, that. No, wait, I've completely lost myself now. Anyway, we hit the Earthquake on this Venusaur, that's fine. Um, this is where... <laughs> this, this is the best part of the battle for me. This is the best part. I go into Crest, because I, I realised like an hour before this battle that this thing's going to put me to sleep. And I'm like, well, crap. Um, Crest can go to sleep. So, the Venusaur right is here. Ob obviously, it was going to be Mega Venusaur. Why wouldn't it be? Um, and I was like, right, Sleep Powder's here. And if, if it wants to attack me or Leech Seed, that's, that's quite honestly fine. Uh, guess for sea powder and misses. I'm like, yay for Cress. Floating duck pulls through again. This is why people dislike me. Because I bring Cress. I mean, it's not my fault no one else picked Cress. I go for the Thunder Wave. I'm actually faster. Venusaur, Mega Venusaur has got five base speed more. So I don't really know what's going on there. It must be like a minus. Oh, it's mixed offense. That's why it's a minus speed nature. I get it now. Um, the paralysis comes through. Stops that sleep again, which is nice. So... That, that's that's a thing. And then I go for the Psychic, hoping for a special defense drop, which I don't. But that's a good amount of damage. Probably revealing it's a physically defensive one. And she misses the Sleep Powder again. And after the game, we both said, you know what? I thought I was going to win after Venusaur died. And she thought she was going to lose after Venusaur died. So guys, if you want a Venusaur counter, there you go. Cresselia, who can dodge Sleep Powders, is your answer. Um, anyway, in comes the bug. And I'm like, ugh, this thing. She told me she wasn't going to bring it. Um, I call her bluff though, actually, and I'm pretty sure she was going to go into Dublade. Um, I wish I'd have gone into Mence at this point, because I would have intimidated, uh, oh no, I might have intimidated, no, I'm slower than Heracross, so I would have intimidated this uh, stupid set of swords, and oh, I could have, I could have two-shotted it. Nice and easy, but I switch in here, Stealthrocks are up, uh, Mence is going to start losing a bit of momentum for me, because obviously rocks, I need to defog, but I can't get a free switch in, and Ellie just goes to the gyro ball, and completely bodies me. Now, I haven't run a calc, I mean, I'm a lot faster than she is, um, but it was minus one, so I don't know if the minus one would have saved me if it wasn't a crit, I, I don't know. Um, in comes Alakazam, now, we, uh, I didn't know she knew this at the time, but Alakazam can actually, or Mega Alakazam, can live a Shadow Sneak, so Ellie is forced to go for a Gyro Ball here, and I am forced to hope for a high roll, because this and Mence are pretty much the only things that could stop Dublade, because... Dublade with a Violite, it's got base 150 defense, it's ridiculous. Special defense doesn't pull through and Shadow Ball kills, which is lovely. Thank you, Steel, for not resisting Ghost anymore. So here comes this goddamn Beetle. Now, I know the Meghorn's coming, and this is where the plays were bad. Um, basically, I went into Crest to sack it off. Now, realizing uh, later on about something about this Heatran, Crest would have been amazing. But, you know, the Mega Horn does a lot of damage. I knew if she brought Heracross, it would do a lot of damage. Um, but, I should have gone into Empoleon here. Here, I should have gone to Empoleon. Could have defogged. Got rid of them Stealth Rocks, which were quite important, actually. Um, and now Crest is gone, which is bad. Because, if I could have played around this Heracross a bit better, it... it oh, man. Anyway, in comes Bravery. Now, I have, I'm running Aerial Ace on this Terrakion just because I'm a boss and I can. Um, she was predicting the Stone Edge here, so she switches out into Potato. Um, I wish I'd have clicked Earthquake or something. Something that would have killed this thing straight up would have been nice, but Aerial Ace does absolutely nothing. And now my secret um, is out that I have got Aerial Ace. She wouldn't have known that if I hadn't have used it. So, yeah. Um, I am Choice Scarf though, so I have to switch. If I was Life Orb, oh my god, if I was Life Orb, things could have gone so differently. Um, Empoleon here is going to just... This thing's only attacking move is Earthquake. I was like, oh god damn it. I really wish this thing had a fire move. I could have just traced, like, you know, Flash Fire and just done stuff with Zam. That would have been nice. But nope, she goes for the Taunt here. I didn't even know he tried and got Taunt. I don't play the upper tiers. That was a nice bit of knowledge I've now learned. I can't go for the Defog. I was so close to just clicking Knock Off. Because I didn't want this thing recovering up any health. And then I could have scalded or, you know, Defog or whatever next. Um, so I'm, I decided to Knock Off here. Hindsight, probably should have gone for the school. Um, and I'm just going to let this thing die. 
And now that, uh, now Empoleon's gone, my defensive core has gone, and I'm like, right, I am on a serious timer right now. That, that Heracross is going to screw me over so much. So, I took some time making the move here, but obviously because it's post-com, you can't tell. I go for the Stone Edge, uh, expecting the switch, which was correct, hoping that it was into, well, I don't know what, I completely forgot she even bought this Milotic. If I'd have pulled the double into Raikou here, that would have been lovely. But uh, apparently I'm not allowed these nice things. I could have stayed in and tried to get the crit stone edge. But I'm not manly enough. And I have to switch out into Raikou here. Because I need to keep Mega Zam alive. Um, although I can't outspeed Heracross with it. Choice Scarf, max speed. I can't outspeed it. Um, here comes the school though. And Raikou's naturally bulky. So he takes that relatively okay. The burn isn't there. So I can take another one. Question is, does she want to take a Thunderbolt? Who knows. Um, so I'm pretty sure on this turn I go straight up for the Thunderbolt. Um, I could go for the sub, but honestly, no, I think I might have gone for the sub. Yeah, no, I went for the Thunderbolt. I'm all over the place. I went for the Thunderbolt, um, didn't want to play any games. If I had have gone for the sub, it wouldn't have really benefited me in any way. Um, I'd be at less health than I was. So I'm just going for Thunderbolts here, hoping either for crits or paralysis. Paralysis would have been lovely at this stage. Um, I could have really tried to set up on this thing, but... Never mind, I knew it had Earthquake, it's his only attacking move, I do die to it, which is a shame. Um, and now I just have Terrakion and Alakazam left, so I have two massive threats. Honestly, uh, Terrakion was the one who I thought would probably do the least work in this game, because I couldn't hit anything with a stab close combat, like, effectively, apart from Heatran, but I could just kill that with Earthquake anyway. So, here, Ellie switches out into Angel into the Togekiss. I substitute here thinking, right, this could be my only chance of a win. So I'm going to go for the sub. I do stay behind it. Now I can go for the Psychics, fire them off, hoping for a special defense drop, see how much this does. Uh, I want to say that's probably specially defensive because, you know, that's base 175 stab from an Alaka Mega Alakazam, but that thing took it well. Didn't get the defense drop. Pretty sure Alakazam can take an Air Slash because I'm thinking it's a bulky Togekiss. Um, and I do bring it down to red. Air Slash isn't going to kill from that range because it is bulky. If it was offensive, that might have killed. I can live another Stealth Rock turn, which is interesting. Um, not that it matters. I'm just going to kill off this thing. Now I get the critical hit, which I would have loved a turn sooner. I would have loved it a turn sooner. I mean, it's so frustrating. I, if I'd have got my rocks up, I would have won this game. This Heracross would have been dead by now. Um... And this Heracross has just now got the free free run just to terrorize everybody here. The only thing I have left is Terrakion, and I have to lock myself into Stone Edge and hope that I hit free, crit this thing, uh, I'll kill uh, Heatran from where it is, and then I have to hope I get a crit on Milotic as well based on prior damage. But it doesn't come through, and that's the game. It's a 3 0 to Ellie. Good game, Ellie. Next up, I have Fred Ford. Fred, I'm coming for you. Watch out, buddy. I will not hold back. Although I said that against Ellie. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a thumbs up. See you next time. Bye.